Now Solomon the son of David established himself securely over his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and exalted him greatly. And Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the commanders of thousands, of hundreds, and to the judges and to every leader in all Israel, the heads of the Fathers' households. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place which was at Gibeon, because God's tent of meeting was there which Moses, the servant of the Lord had made in the wilderness. However, David had brought up the ark of God from kiriath Jerim to the place he had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. Now the bronze altar which Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made was there before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the assembly sought it out. And Solomon went up there before the Lord to the bronze altar which was at the tent of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. In that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said to God, You have dealt with my father David with great faithfulness, and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, your promise to my father David is fulfilled, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Now give me wisdom and knowledge, so that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can rule this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you did not ask for riches, wealth, or honor, or the life of those who hate you, nor did you even ask for long life, but you asked for yourself wisdom and knowledge so that you may rule my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge have been granted to you. I will also give you riches, wealth, and honor, such as none of the kings who were before you has possessed, nor will those who will come after you. So Solomon went from the high place which was at Gibeon, from the tent of meeting, to Jerusalem, and he reigned over Israel. Solomon amassed chariots and horsemen. He had one thousand four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, and he stationed them in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold as plentiful in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedars as plentiful as sycamores in the lowland. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Kew, the king's traders acquired them from Kew for a price. They imported chariots from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver apiece, horses for 150 apiece, and by the same means they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Aram. Now Solomon decided to build a house for the name of the Lord, and a royal palace for himself. So Solomon assigned seventy thousand men to carry loads, eighty thousand men to quarry stone in the mountains, and three thousand six hundred to supervise them. Then Solomon sent word to Huram the king of Tyre, saying, As you dealt with my father David and sent him cedars to build him a house to live in, do it for me. Behold, I am about to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, dedicating it to him, to burn fragrant incense before him and to set out the showbread continually, and to offer burnt offerings morning and evening, on Sabbaths, on new moons, and on the appointed feasts of the Lord our God. This is to be done in Israel forever. The house which I am about to build will be great, for our God is greater than all the gods. But who is able to build a house for him, since the heavens and the highest heavens cannot contain him? And who am I, that I should build a house for him, except to burn incense before him? Now send me a skilled man to work in gold, silver, brass, iron, and in purple, crimson, and violet fabrics, one who knows how to make engravings, to work with the skilled workers whom I have in Judah and Jerusalem whom my father David provided. Send me also cedar, juniper, and algum timber from Lebanon, for I know that your servants know how to cut timber of Lebanon, and indeed my servants will work with your servants. To prepare timber in abundance for me, for the house which I am about to build will be great and wonderful. Now behold, 
I will give your servants, the woodsmen who cut the timber, twenty thousand cores of crushed wheat, twenty thousand cores of barley, twenty thousand baths of wine, and twenty thousand baths of oil. Then Huram, king of Tyre, answered in a letter sent to Solomon, Because the Lord loves his people, he has made you king over them. Then Huram continued, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who made heaven and earth, who has given King David a wise son, endowed with discretion and understanding, who will build a house for the Lord and a royal palace for himself. Now then, I am sending Huram Abi, a skilled man, endowed with understanding. The son of a Danite woman and a Tyrian father, who knows how to work in gold, silver, bronze, iron, stone, and wood, and in purple, violet, linen, and crimson fabrics, and who knows how to make all kinds of engravings and to execute any design which is assigned to him, to work with your skilled workers and with those of my lord, your father David. Now then, let my lord send his servants wheat and barley, oil and wine, of which he has spoken. We will cut whatever timber you need from Lebanon and bring it to you as rafts by sea to Joppa, so that you may carry it up to Jerusalem. Solomon counted all the foreigners who were in the land of Israel, following the census which his father David had taken, and 153,600 were found. He appointed 70,000 of them to carry loads and 80,000 to quarry stones in the mountains, and 3,600 supervisors to make the people work. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David, at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. He began to build on the second day in the second month of the fourth year of his reign. Now these are the foundations which Solomon laid for building the house of God. The length in cubits, according to the old standard, was sixty cubits, and the width, twenty cubits. The porch which was in front of the house was as long as the width of the house, twenty cubits, and the height twenty, and inside he overlaid it with pure gold. He overlaid the main room with juniper wood and overlaid it with fine gold, and he ornamented it with palm trees and chains. Further, he overlaid the house with precious stones, and the gold was gold from Parvain. He also overlaid the house with gold, the beams, the thresholds, and its walls and doors, and he carved cherubim on the walls. Then he made the room of the most holy place, its length across the width of the house was twenty cubits, and its width was twenty cubits, and he overlaid it with fine gold, amounting to six hundred talents. The weight of the nails was fifty shekels of gold. He also overlaid the upper rooms with gold. Then he made two sculptured cherubim in the room of the most holy place and overlaid them with gold. The wingspan of the cherubim was twenty cubits, the wing of one, of five cubits, touched the wall of the house, and its other wing, of five cubits, touched the wing of the other cherub. The wing of the other cherub, of five cubits, touched the wall of the house, and its other wing, of five cubits, was attached to the wing of the first cherub. The wings of these cherubim extended twenty cubits, and they stood on their feet facing the main room. He made the veil of violet, purple, crimson, and fine linen, and he worked cherubim into it. He also made two pillars for the front of the house, thirty-five cubits high, and the capital on the top of each was five cubits. He made chains in the inner sanctuary and placed them on the tops of the pillars, and he made a hundred pomegranates and placed them on the chains. He erected the pillars in front of the temple, one on the right and the other on the left, and named the one on the right Jachin and the one on the left Boaz. Then he made a bronze altar, twenty cubits in length, twenty cubits in width, and ten cubits in height. He also made the sea of cast metal, ten cubits from brim to brim, circular in form, 
and its height was 5 cubits and its circumference 30 cubits. Now figures like oxen were under it and all around it, 10 cubits, entirely encircling the sea. The oxen were in two rows, cast in one piece. It was standing on 12 oxen, 3 facing north, 3 facing west, 3 facing south, and 3 facing east, and the sea was set on top of them and all their hindquarters turned inward. It was a hand width thick, and its brim was made like the brim of a cup, like a lily blossom, it could hold 3,000 baths. He also made ten basins in which to wash, and he set five on the right side and five on the left to rinse things for the burnt offering, but the sea was for the priests to wash in. Then he made the ten golden lampstands in the way prescribed for them, and he set them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. He also made ten tables and placed them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. And he made a hundred golden bowls. Then he made the courtyard of the priests and the great courtyard, and doors for the courtyard, and overlaid their doors with bronze. He put the sea on the right side of the house toward the southeast. Hiram also made the pails, the shovels, and the bowls. So Huram finished the work that he did for King Solomon in the house of God. The two pillars, the bowls, and the two capitals on top of the pillars, and the two latticeworks to cover the two bowls of the capitals which were on top of the pillars. And the four hundred pomegranates for the two latticeworks, two rows of pomegranates for each latticework to cover the two bowls of the capitals which were on the pillars. He also made the stands and he made the basins on the stands. And the one sea with the twelve oxen under it. The pails, the shovels, the forks, and all its utensils, here may be I made of polished bronze for King Solomon, for the house of the Lord. On the plain of the Jordan the king cast them in the clay ground between Sukkot and Zerida. So Solomon made all these utensils in great quantities, for the weight of the bronze could not be determined. Solomon also made all the things that were in the house of God, the golden altar, the tables with the bread of the presence on them. The lampstands with their lamps of pure gold, to burn in front of the inner sanctuary in the way prescribed. The flowers, the lamps, and the tongs of gold, that is, of purest gold. And the snuffers, the bowls, the spoons, and the fire pans of pure gold, and the entrance of the house, its inner doors for the most holy place and the doors of the house, that is, of the main room, of gold. So all the work that Solomon performed for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things that his father David had dedicated, the silver, the gold, and all the utensils, and he put them in the treasuries of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled at Jerusalem the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes, and the leaders of the fathers' households of the sons of Israel, to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord up from the city of David, which is Zion. All the men of Israel assembled themselves before the king at the feast, that is in the seventh month. Then all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites picked up the ark. They brought up the ark, the tent of meeting, and all the holy utensils that were in the tent. The Levitical priests brought them up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who had assembled with him before the ark were sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the house, to the most holy place, under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, so that the cherubim made a covering over the ark and its poles. The poles were so long that the ends of the poles of the ark could be seen in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen outside, and they are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets which Moses put there at Horeb, 
where the Lord made a covenant with the sons of Israel, when they came out of Egypt. When the priests came out from the holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves, without regard to divisions. And all the Levitical singers, Azaph, Heman, Jeduthun, and their sons and kinsmen, clothed in fine linen, with cymbals, harps, and lyres, standing east of the altar, and with them one hundred and twenty priests blowing trumpets. In unison when the trumpeters and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and to glorify the Lord, and when they raised their voices accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other musical instruments, and when they praised the Lord saying, He indeed is good for his kindness is everlasting, then the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not rise to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have built you a lofty house, and a place for your dwelling forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel was standing. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David, and fulfilled it with his hands, saying, Since the day that I brought my people from the land of Egypt, I did not choose a city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house, so that my name might be there, nor did I choose a man to be the leader over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem so that my name might be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Because it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless you shall not build the house, but your son who will be born to you, he shall build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his word which he spoke, for I have risen in place of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. There I have placed the ark in which is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with the sons of Israel. Then he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. For Solomon had made a bronze platform, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the courtyard, and he stood on it, knelt on his knees in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven. He said, Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping your covenant and your faithfulness to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You who have kept with your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, you have spoken with your mouth and have fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Now then, Lord, God of Israel, keep to your servant David, my father, that which you promised him, saying, You shall not lack a man to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your sons pay attention to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Now then, Lord, God of Israel, let your word be confirmed which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God really dwell with mankind on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house which I have built. Nevertheless, turn your attention to the prayer of your servant and to his plea, Lord, my God, to listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you. That your eye will be open toward this house day and night, toward the place of which you have said that you would put your name there, to listen to the prayer which your servant shall pray toward this place. Listen to the pleadings of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place, hear from your dwelling place, from heaven, hear and forgive. If someone sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath, and he comes and takes an oath before your altar in this house. Then hear from heaven and take action and judge your servants, punishing the wicked by bringing his way on his own head, 
and justifying the righteous by repaying him according to his righteousness. If your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, and they return to you and praise your name, and pray and plead before you in this house. Then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them back to the land which you have given to them and to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, and they pray toward this place and praise your name, and turn from their sin when you afflict them. Then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and your people Israel, indeed, teach them the good way in which they are to walk. And provide rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is a famine in the land, if there is a plague, if there is blight or mildew, if there is locust or grasshopper, if their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is. Whatever prayer or plea is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, each knowing his own affliction and his own pain, and spreading his hands toward this house. Then hear from heaven, your dwelling place, and forgive, and render to each according to all his ways, whose heart you know for you alone know the hearts of the sons of mankind. So that they may fear you, to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you have given to our fathers. Also concerning the foreigner who is not from your people Israel, when he comes from a far country on account of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray toward this house. Then hear from heaven, from your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name, and fear you as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemies, by whatever way you send them, and they pray to you toward this city which you have chosen and the house which I have built for your name. Then hear from heaven their prayer and their pleading, and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them and turn them over to an enemy, so that they take them away captive to a land far off or near. If they take it to heart in the land where they are taken captive, and repent and plead to you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done wrong, have acted wickedly. If they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have been taken captive, and pray toward their land which you have given to their fathers and the city which you have chosen, and toward the house which I have built for your name. Then hear from heaven, from your dwelling place, their prayer and pleadings, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, my God, please, let your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayer offered in this place. Now then arise, Lord God, to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, let your priests, Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your godly ones rejoice in what is good. Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed, remember your faithfulness to your servant David. Now when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. All the sons of Israel, seeing the fire come down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, bowed down on the pavement with their faces to the ground, and they worshipped and gave praise to the Lord, saying, Certainly he is good, certainly his faithfulness is everlasting. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifice before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty-two thousand oxen and one hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. The priests stood at their posts, and the Levites also, with the musical instruments for the Lord, which King David had made for giving praise to the Lord, for his faithfulness is everlasting, whenever David gave praise through their ministry, the priests on the other side blew trumpets and all Israel was standing. 
Then Solomon consecrated the middle of the courtyard that was before the house of the Lord, for he offered the burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings there, because the bronze altar which Solomon had made was not able to contain the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the fat. So Solomon held the feast at that time for seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great assembly that came from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt. And on the eighth day they held a solemn assembly, because they held the dedication of the altar for seven days, and the feast for seven days. Then on the twenty-third day of the seventh month he sent the people to their tents, rejoicing and happy in heart because of the goodness that the Lord had shown to David, to Solomon, and to his people Israel. So Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's palace, and successfully completed everything that he had planned on doing in the house of the Lord and in his palace. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send a plague among my people, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves, and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer offered in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house so that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there always. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, to do according to everything that I have commanded you, and keep my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish your royal throne as I covenanted with your father David, saying, You shall not lack a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and abandon my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot you from my land which I have given you, and this house which I have consecrated for my name I will cast out of my sight, and I will make it a proverb and an object of scorn among all peoples. As for this house, which was exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done these things to this land and to this house? And they will say, Because they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them from the land of Egypt, and they adopted other gods, and worshipped and served them, therefore he has brought all this adversity on them. Now it came about at the end of the twenty years in which Solomon had built the house of the Lord and his own house, that he built the cities which Huram had given him, and settled the sons of Israel there. Then Solomon went to Hamath Zobah and captured it. He built Tadmor in the wilderness and all the storage cities which he had built in Hamath. He also built Upper Beth Horon and Lower Beth Horon, which were fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars. And Balath and all the storage cities that Solomon had, and all the cities for his chariots and cities for his horsemen, and everything that it pleased Solomon to build in Jerusalem, Lebanon, and all the land under his rule. All of the people who were left of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, who were not of Israel. That is, from their descendants who were left after them in the land, whom the sons of Israel had not destroyed, Solomon raised them as forced laborers to this day. But Solomon did not make slaves from the sons of Israel for his work, for they were men of war his chief captains and commanders of his chariots and his horsemen. These were the chief officers of King Solomon, 250 who ruled over the people. Then Solomon brought Pharaoh's daughter up from the city of David to the house which he had built for her, for he said, My wife shall not live in the house of David king of Israel, because the places where the ark of the Lord has entered are holy. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of the Lord which he had built in front of the porch. And he did so according to the daily rule, 
offering them up according to the commandment of Moses, for the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the three annual feasts, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Booths. Now according to the ordinance of his father David, he appointed the divisions of the priests for their service, and the Levites for their duties of praise and ministering before the priests according to the daily rule, and the gatekeepers by their divisions at every gate, for this is what David, the man of God, had commanded. And they did not deviate from the commandment of the king to the priests and Levites in any matter or regarding the storehouses. So all the work of Solomon was carried out from the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord, until it was finished. So the house of the Lord was completed. Then Solomon went to Ezion Geber and to Eloth on the seashore in the land of Edom. And by his servants Huram sent him ships and servants who knew the sea, and they went with Solomon's servants to Ophir and took from there four hundred and fifty talents of gold, and brought it to King Solomon. Now when the Queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test Solomon with riddles. She had a very large entourage, with camels carrying balsam oil and a large amount of gold and precious stones, and when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about everything that was on her heart. Solomon answered all her questions, nothing was hidden from Solomon which he did not explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house which he had built, the food at his table, the seating of his servants, the attendance of his ministers and their attire, his cupbearers and their attire, and his stairway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, she was breathless. Then she said to the king, It was a true story that I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. But I did not believe their stories until I came and my own eyes saw it all. And behold, not even half of the greatness of your wisdom was reported to me. You have surpassed the report that I heard. How blessed are your men! How blessed are these servants of yours, who stand before you continually and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you, setting you on his throne as king for the Lord your God, because your God loved Israel, establishing them forever, he made you king over them, to carry out justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king one hundred and twenty talents of gold and a very great amount of balsam oil and precious stones, there had never been balsam oil like that which the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. The servants of Huram and the servants of Solomon who brought gold from Ophir, also brought algum trees and precious stones. From the algum trees the king made steps to the house of the Lord and for the king's palace, and lyres and harps for the singers, and nothing like them was seen before in the land of Judah. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba her every desire, whatever she requested, besides gifts equal to what she had brought to the king. Then she turned and went to her own land with her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold. Besides what the traders and merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made two hundred large shields of beaten gold, using six hundred shekels of beaten gold on each large shield. He made three hundred shields of beaten gold, using three hundred shekels of gold on each shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with pure gold. There were six steps to the throne and a footstool in gold attached to the throne, and arms on each side of the seat, and two lions standing beside the arms. Twelve lions were standing there on the six steps on the one side and on the other, nothing like it was made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold, silver was not considered valuable in the days of Solomon. For the king had ships which went to Tarshish with the servants of Huram, 
Once every three years the ships of Tarshish came bringing gold and silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. So King Solomon became greater than all the kings of the earth in wealth and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth were seeking the presence of Solomon, to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart. They were bringing, each of them his gift, articles of silver and gold, garments, weapons, balsam oil, horses, and mules, so much year by year. Now Solomon had four thousand stalls for horses and chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, and he stationed them in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. He was ruler over all the kings from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines, and as far as the border of Egypt. And the king made silver as common as stones in Jerusalem, and he made cedars as plentiful as sycamore trees that are in the lowland. And they were bringing horses for Solomon from Egypt and from all countries. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, from the first to the last, are they not written in the records of Nathan the prophet, in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, and in the visions of Iddo the seer concerning Jeroboam the son of Nebat? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel for forty years. And Solomon lay down with his fathers and was buried in the city of his father David, and his son Rehoboam reigned in his place. Then Rehoboam went to Shechem, because all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard about it, he was in Egypt where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon, Jeroboam returned from Egypt. So they sent word and summoned him. When Jeroboam and all Israel came, they spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke hard, but now, lighten the hard labor imposed by your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Return to me again in three days. So the people departed. And then King Rehoboam consulted with the elders who had served his father Solomon while he was still alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? They spoke to him, saying, If you are kind to this people and please them and speak pleasant words to them, then they will be your servants always. But he ignored the advice of the elders which they had given him, and consulted with the young men who had grown up with him and served him. He said to them, What advice do you give, so that we may answer this people, who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, This is what you should say to the people who spoke to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter for us. You should speak this way to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now then, my father loaded you with a heavy yoke, yet I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, just as the king had directed, saying, Return to me on the third day. The king answered them harshly, and King Rehoboam ignored the advice of the elders. He spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it, My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, because it was a turn of events from God so that the Lord might establish his word, which he spoke through Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. When all Israel saw that the king had not listened to them, the people replied to the king, saying, What share do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Everyone to your tents, Israel. Now look after your own house, David. So all Israel went away to their tents. But as for the sons of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadaram, who was in charge of the forced labor, and the sons of Israel stoned him to death. 
and King Rehoboam hurried to mount his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Now when Rehoboam had come to Jerusalem, he assembled the house of Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 chosen warriors, to fight against Israel to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah the man of God, saying, Tell Rehoboam the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, This is what the Lord says, You shall not go up nor fight against your relatives, return, every man, to his house, for this event is from me. So they listened to the words of the Lord and returned from going against Jeroboam. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. He built Bethlehem, Etam, Tico, Bethzur, Soko, Adullam, Gath, Mershah, Ziph, Adaram, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Ijalan, and Hebron, which are fortified cities in Judah and Benjamin. He also strengthened the fortresses and put officers in them and supplies of food, oil, and wine. He put shields and spears in every city and strengthened them greatly. So he held Judah and Benjamin. Moreover, the priests and the Levites who were in all Israel also stood with him from all their districts. For the Levites left their pasture lands and their property and went to Judah and Jerusalem, because Jeroboam and his sons had excluded them from serving as priests to the Lord. He set up priests of his own for the high places, for the satyrs and the calves which he had made. Those from all the tribes of Israel who set their hearts on seeking the Lord God of Israel followed them to Jerusalem, to sacrifice to the Lord God of their fathers. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah and supported Rehoboam the son of Solomon for three years, for they walked in the way of David and Solomon for three years. Then Rehoboam married Mahalath the daughter of Jeremoth the son of David and of Abihail the daughter of Eliab the son of Jesse. And she bore to him sons, Jush, Shemariah, and Zaim. After her he married Makkah the daughter of Absalom, and she bore to him Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shelemith. Rehoboam loved Makkah the daughter of Absalom more than all his other wives and concubines. For he had taken eighteen wives and sixty concubines, and fathered twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters. Rehoboam appointed Abijah the son of Makkah as head and leader among his brothers, for he intended to make him king. He acted wisely and distributed some of his sons through all the territories of Judah and Benjamin to all the fortified cities, and he gave them plenty of provisions. And he sought many wives for them. When the kingdom of Rehoboam was established and strong, he and all Israel with him abandoned the law of the Lord. And it came about in King Rehoboam's fifth year, because they had been unfaithful to the Lord, that Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem. With 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen. And the people who came with him from Egypt were innumerable, the Lubim, the Sukkim, and the Ethiopians. And he captured the fortified cities of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. Then Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and the princes of Judah who had gathered at Jerusalem because of Shishak, and he said to them, This is what the Lord says, You have abandoned me, so I also have abandoned you to Shishak. So the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is righteous. When the Lord saw that they had humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, they have humbled themselves, so I will not destroy them, and I will grant them a little deliverance, and my wrath will not be poured out on Jerusalem by means of Shishak. But they will become his slaves, so that they may learn the difference between my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak king of Egypt went up against Jerusalem, 
and he took the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's palace. He took everything, he even took the gold shields which Solomon had made. 10 Then King Rehoboam made shields of bronze in their place and committed them to the care of the commanders of the guards who guarded the entrance of the king's house. As often as the king entered the house of the Lord, the guards came and carried them and then brought them back into the guards' room. And when he humbled himself, the anger of the Lord turned away from him, so as not to destroy him completely, and conditions were also good in Judah. So King Rehoboam became powerful in Jerusalem and reigned there. For Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen from all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naamah the Ammonitess. But he did evil because he did not set his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Rehoboam, from the first to the last, are they not written in the records of Shemaiah the prophet and of Edo the seer, according to genealogical enrollment? And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam lay down with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, and his son Abijah became king in his place. In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, Abijah became king over Judah. He reigned in Jerusalem for three years, and his mother's name was Micaiah the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. Now there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. Abijah began the battle with an army of warriors, four hundred thousand chosen men, while Jeroboam drew up in battle formation against him with eight hundred thousand chosen men who were valiant warriors. Then Abijah stood on Mount Zemaraim, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, and said, Listen to me, Jeroboam and all Israel. Do you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the rule over Israel forever to David and his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon the son of David, rose up and rebelled against his master. And worthless men gathered to him, wicked men, who proved too strong for Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when he was young and timid and could not hold his own against them. So now you intend to assert yourselves against the kingdom of the Lord through the sons of David, being a great multitude and having with you the golden calves which Jeroboam made for you as gods. Have you not driven out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and made for yourselves priests like the peoples of other lands? Whoever comes to consecrate himself with a bull and seven rams, even he may become a priest of things that are not gods. But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not abandoned him, and the sons of Aaron are ministering to the Lord as priests, and the Levites attend to their work. Every morning and evening they burn to the Lord burnt offerings and fragrant incense, and the showbread is set on the clean table, and the golden lampstand with its lamps is ready to light every evening, for we perform our duty to the Lord our God, but you have abandoned him. Now behold, God is with us at our head, and his priests with the signal trumpets to sound the war cry against you. Sons of Israel, do not fight against the Lord God of your fathers, for you will not succeed. But Jeroboam had set an ambush to come from behind, so that Israel was in front of Judah and the ambush was behind them. When Judah turned around, behold, they were attacked both from front and rear, so they cried out to the Lord, and the priests blew the trumpets. Then the men of Judah raised a war cry, and when the men of Judah raised the war cry, God defeated Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. When the sons of Israel fled from Judah, God handed them over to them. Abijah and his people defeated them with a great slaughter, so that five hundred thousand chosen men of Israel fell slain. The sons of Israel were subdued at that time, and the sons of Judah conquered because they trusted in the Lord, the God of their fathers. Abijah pursued Jeroboam and captured from him several cities, 
Bethel with its villages, Jeshana with its villages, and Ephron with its villages. Jeroboam did not again recover strength in the days of Abijah, and the Lord struck him and he died. But Abijah became powerful, and he took fourteen wives for himself, and fathered twenty-two sons and sixteen daughters. Now the rest of the acts of Abijah, and his ways and his words are written in the treatise of Iddo the prophet. So Abijah lay down with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and his son Asa became king in his place. The land was undisturbed for ten years during his days. And Asa did what was good and right in the sight of the Lord his God. For he removed the foreign altars and high places, tore down the memorial stones, cut down the ashram, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to comply with the law and the commandment. He also removed the high places and the incense altars from all the cities of Judah. And the kingdom was undisturbed under him. He built fortified cities in Judah, since the land was undisturbed, and there was no one at war with him during those years, because the Lord had given him rest. For he said to Judah, Let's build these cities and surround them with walls and towers, gates and bars. The land is still ours because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. Now Asa had an army of three hundred thousand from Judah, carrying large shields and spears, and two hundred and eighty thousand from Benjamin, carrying shields and wielding bows, all of them were valiant warriors. Now Zerah the Ethiopian went out against them with an army of a million men and three hundred chariots, and he came to Mershah. So Asa went out to meet him, and they drew up in battle formation in the valley of Zephatha at Mershah. Then Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one besides you to help in the battle between the powerful and those who have no strength, help us, Lord our God, for we trust in you, and in your name have come against this multitude. Lord, you are our God, do not let man prevail against you. So the Lord routed the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. Asa and the people who were with him pursued them as far as Gerar, and so many Ethiopians fell that they could not recover, for they were shattered before the Lord and before his army. And they carried away a very large amount of plunder. They destroyed all the cities around Gerar, for the dread of the Lord had fallen on them, and they pillaged all the cities, for there was much plunder in them. They also fatally struck those who owned livestock, and they led away large numbers of sheep and camels. Then they returned to Jerusalem. Now the Spirit of God came on Azariah the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you when you are with him. And if you seek him, he will let you find him, but if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For many days Israel was without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. For but in their distress they turned to the Lord God of Israel, and they sought him, and he let them find him. In those times there was no peace for him who went out or him who came in, because many disturbances afflicted all the inhabitants of the lands. Nation was crushed by nation, and city by city, for God troubled them with every kind of distress. But you, be strong and do not lose courage, for there is a reward for your work. Now when Asa heard these words and the prophecy which Azariah the son of Oded the prophet spoke, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and from the cities which he had captured in the hill country of Ephraim. He then restored the altar of the Lord which was in front of the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin, and those from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon who resided with them, for many defected to him from Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. 
So they assembled at Jerusalem in the third month of the fifteenth year of Asa's reign. They sacrificed to the Lord on that day seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep from the spoils they had brought. They entered into the covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and soul. And whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was to be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. Moreover, they made an oath to the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting, trumpets, and with horns. All Judah rejoiced concerning the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and had sought him earnestly, and he let them find him. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. He also removed Maka, the mother of King Asa, from the position of queen mother, because she had made an abominable image as an Asherah, and Asa cut down her abominable image, crushed it, and burned it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed from Israel, nevertheless Asa's heart was blameless all his days. He brought into the house of God the dedicated things of his father and his own dedicated things, silver, gold, and utensils. And there was no more war until the thirty-fifth year of Asa's reign. In the thirty-sixth year of Asa's reign, Basha king of Israel came up against Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from going out or coming in to Asa king of Judah. Then Asa brought out silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the king's house, and sent it to Ben-Hadad king of Aram, who lived in Damascus, saying, A treaty must be made between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent you silver and gold, go, break your treaty with Basha king of Israel so that he will withdraw from me. And Ben-Hadad listened to King Asa, and he sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel, and they conquered Ijan, Dan, Abelmaim, and all the storage cities of Naphtali. When Basha heard about it, he stopped fortifying Ramah and put an end to his work. Then King Asa brought all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah and its timber with which Basha had been building, and with it he fortified Geba and Mizpah. At that time Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Aram and have not relied on the Lord your God, for that reason the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubim an immense army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, he handed them over to you. For the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth, so that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. You have acted foolishly in this. Indeed, from now on you will have wars. 10 Then Asa was angry with the seer and put him in prison, for he was enraged at him for this. And Asa mistreated some of the people at the same time. Now, the acts of Asa from the first to the last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. In the thirty-ninth year of his reign Asa became diseased in his feet. His disease was severe, yet even in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So Asa lay down with his fathers, and died in the forty-first year of his reign. They buried him in his own tomb which he had cut out for himself in the city of David, and they laid him in the resting place which he had filled with spices of various kinds blended by the perfumer's art, and they made a very great fire for him. His son Jehoshaphat then became king in his place, and he proved himself strong over Israel. He placed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah, and placed garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim which his father Asa had captured. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the example of his father David's earlier days and did not seek the Baals. But sought the God of his father, followed his commandments, and did not act as Israel did. So the Lord established the kingdom in his control, and all Judah gave tribute to Jehoshaphat, and he had great riches and honor. 
He took great pride in the ways of the Lord, and again removed the high places and the ashram from Judah. Then in the third year of his reign he sent his officials, Ben-Hale, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nethanel, and Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them the Levites, Shemaiah, Nethaniah, Zebadiah, Asahel, Shemiramoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tabijah, and Tobadonijah, the Levites, and with them the priests Elishama and Jehoram. They taught in Judah, having the book of the law of the Lord with them, and they went throughout the cities of Judah and taught among the people. Now the dread of the Lord was on all the kingdoms of the lands which were around Judah, so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Eleven some of the Philistines brought gifts and silver as tribute to Jehoshaphat, the Arabians also brought him flocks, seven thousand seven hundred rams and seven thousand seven hundred male goats. So Jehoshaphat grew greater and greater, and he built fortresses and storage cities in Judah. He had large supplies in the cities of Judah, and warriors, valiant mighty men, in Jerusalem. This was their muster according to their fathers' households, of Judah, commanders of thousands, Adna was the commander, and with him three hundred thousand valiant warriors. And next to him was Johanan the commander, and with him two hundred and eighty thousand. And next to him Amasiah the son of Zikri, who volunteered for the Lord, and with him two hundred thousand valiant warriors. And of Benjamin, Eliada, a valiant warrior, and with him two hundred thousand armed with bow and shield. And next to him Jehazabad, and with him one hundred and eighty thousand equipped for war. These are the ones who served the king, apart from those whom the king put in the fortified cities throughout Judah. Now Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor, and he allied himself by marriage to Ahab. Some years later he went down to visit Ahab at Samaria, and Ahab slaughtered many sheep and oxen for him and the people who were with him. And he incited him to go up against Ramoth Gilead. Ahab king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? And he said to him, I am as you are, and my people as your people, and we will be with you in the battle. However, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please request the word of the Lord first. So the king of Israel assembled the prophets, four hundred men, and said to them, Should we go to battle against Ramoth Gilead, or should I refrain? And they said, Go up, for God will hand it over to the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here, that we may inquire of him? And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesies anything good regarding me, but always bad. He is Micaiah the son of Imlah. But Jehoshaphat said, May the king not say so. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring Micaiah son of Imlah quickly. Now the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah were sitting, each on his throne, dressed in their robes, and they were sitting at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets were prophesying before them. Then Zedekiah the son of Shanana made horns of iron for himself and said, This is what the Lord says, With these you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the prophets were prophesying this as well, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and be successful, for the Lord will hand it over to the king. Then the messenger who went to summon Micaiah spoke to him saying, Behold, the words of the prophets are unanimously favorable to the king. So please let your word be like one of them, and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever my God says, I will speak it. When he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, should we go to battle against Ramoth Gilead, or should I refrain? He said, Go up and succeed, for they will be handed over to you. 
Then the king said to him, How many times must I make you swear that you will tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? So he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, like sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Each of them is to return to his house in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy anything good regarding me, but only bad? And Micaiah said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the angels of heaven standing on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab king of Israel to go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spirit said this, while another said that. Twenty then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, How? He said, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all his prophets. Then he said, You shall entice him, and you will also prevail. Go out and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouths of these prophets of yours, for the Lord has declared disaster against you. Then Zedekiah the son of Shanana approached and struck Micaiah on the cheek, and he said, How did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? And Micaiah said, Behold, you are going to see how on that day when you go from one inner room to another trying to hide yourself. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon the governor of the city, and to Josh the king's son. And say, This is what the king says, Put this man in prison and feed him enough bread and water to survive until I return safely. But Micaiah said, If you actually return safely, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Listen, all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah went up against Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the commanders of his chariots, saying, Do not fight with the small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So when the commanders of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, He is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God diverted them from him. When the commanders of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. Now one man drew his bow at random and struck the king of Israel in a joint of the armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am severely wounded. The battle raged on that day, and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot in front of the Arameans until the evening, and at sunset he died. Then Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned in safety to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu the son of Hanani the seer went out to meet him and said to king Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord, and by doing so bring wrath on yourself from the Lord? But there is some good in you, for you have removed the Ashroth from the land and you have set your heart to seek God. So Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem and went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim, and brought them back to the Lord, the God of their fathers. He appointed judges in the land in all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city. 6 He said to the judges, Consider what you are doing, for you do not judge for mankind but for the Lord who is with you when you render judgment. Now then, let the fear of the Lord be upon you, be careful about what you do, for the Lord our God will have no part in injustice or partiality, or in the taking of a bribe. In Jerusalem Jehoshaphat also appointed some of the Levites and priests, and some of the heads of the Fathers' households of Israel, 
for the judgment of the Lord, and to judge disputes among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. 9 Then he commanded them, saying, This is what you shall do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and wholeheartedly. Whenever any dispute comes to you from your countrymen who live in their cities, between blood and blood, between law and commandment, statutes and ordinances, you shall warn them so that they will not be guilty before the Lord, and wrath will not come on you and your countrymen. This you shall do and you will not be guilty. Behold, Amaria the chief priest will be over you in every matter that pertains to the Lord, and Zebediah the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, in all that pertains to the king. Also the Levites shall be officers before you. Act resolutely, and may the Lord be with the upright. Now it came about after this, that the sons of Moab and the sons of Ammon, together with some of the Munites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Two then some came and reported to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Aram, and behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar, that is in Yedi, dot. Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a period of fasting throughout Judah. So Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord, they even came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord in front of the new courtyard. And he said, Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in the heavens? And are you not ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand so that no one can stand against you. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land from your people Israel, and give it to the descendants of your friend Abraham forever? They have lived in it, and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, the sword, or judgment, or plague, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear and save us. Now behold, the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you did not allow Israel to invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, for they turned aside from them and did not destroy them. See how they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out from your possession which you have given us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless before this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All Judah was standing before the Lord, with their infants, their wives, and their children. Then in the midst of the assembly the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Metaniah, the Levite of the sons of Azaph. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says to you, Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the valley in front of the wilderness of Jeruel. You need not fight in this battle, take your position, stand and watch the salvation of the Lord in your behalf, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed, tomorrow, go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. 19 The Levites, from the sons of the Kohathites and from the sons of the Korahites, stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel, with a very loud voice. They rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tico, and when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, put your trust in the Lord your God and you will endure. Put your trust in his prophets, and succeed. When he had consulted with the people, 
He appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised Him in holy attire, as they went out before the army and said, Give thanks to the Lord, for His faithfulness is everlasting. When they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so they were struck down. For the sons of Ammon and Moab rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, completely destroying them, and when they had finished with the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When Judah came to the watchtower of the wilderness, they turned toward the multitude, and behold, they were corpses lying on the ground, and there was no survivor. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take their spoils, they found much among them, including goods, garments, and valuable things which they took for themselves, more than they could carry. And they were taking the spoils for three days because there was so much. Then on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Baraka, for they blessed the Lord there. Therefore they have named that place the valley of Baraka, until today. Every man of Judah and Jerusalem returned, with Jehoshaphat at their head, returning to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had helped them to rejoice over their enemies. They came to Jerusalem with harps, lyres, and trumpets, to the house of the Lord. And the dread of God was on all the kingdoms of the lands when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. So the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for his God gave him rest on all sides. Now Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was thirty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for twenty-five years. And his mother's name was Azubah the daughter of Shilhai. He walked in the way of his father Asa and did not deviate from it, doing right in the sight of the Lord. The high places, however, were not removed, the people had not yet directed their hearts to the God of their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first to last, behold, they are written in the annals of Jehu the son of Hanani, which is recorded in the book of the kings of Israel. After this Jehoshaphat king of Judah allied himself with Ahaziah king of Israel. He acted wickedly in so doing. So he allied himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish, and they made the ships in Ezi and Jeber. Then Eleazar the son of Dodavahu of Mershah prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah, the Lord has destroyed your works. So the ships were wrecked and could not go to Tarshish. Then Jehoshaphat lay down with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, and his son Jehoram became king in his place. He had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariahu, Michael, and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat king of Israel. Their father gave them many gifts of silver, gold, and precious things, with fortified cities in Judah, but he gave the kingdom to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram had taken over the kingdom of his father and gathered courage, he killed all his brothers with the sword, and some of the leaders of Israel as well. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned for eight years in Jerusalem. He walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done, for Ahab's daughter was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord was not willing to destroy the house of David because of the covenant which he had made with David, and because he had promised to give a lamp to him and his sons forever. In his days Edom broke away from the rule of Judah, and appointed a king over themselves. Then Jehoram crossed over with his commanders and all his chariots with him. And he got up at night and struck and killed the Edomites who were surrounding him, and the commanders of the chariots. 10 So Edom revolted against Judah to this day. Then Libnah revolted at the same time against his rule because he had abandoned the Lord God of his fathers. Furthermore, 
He made high places in the mountains of Judah, and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to be unfaithful, and led Judah astray. Then a letter came to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, This is what the Lord, the God of your father David says, Because you have not walked in the ways of your father Jehoshaphat and the ways of Asa king of Judah, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and have caused Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to be unfaithful as the house of Ahab was unfaithful, and you have also killed your brothers, your own family, who were better than you. Behold, the Lord is going to strike your people, your sons, your wives, and all your possessions with a great plague. And you will suffer severe sickness, a disease of your bowels, until your bowels come out because of the sickness, day by day. Then the Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and the Arabs who bordered the Ethiopians. And they came against Judah and invaded it, and carried away all the possessions found in the king's house together with his sons and his wives, so that no son was left to him except Jehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. So after all this the Lord struck him in his intestines with an incurable sickness. Now it came about in the course of time, at the end of two years, that his bowels came out because of his sickness, and he died in great pain. And his people did not make a funeral fire for him like the fire for his fathers. He was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for eight years, and he departed with no one's regret, and they buried him in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. Then the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his place, for the band of men who came with the Arabs to the camp had killed all the older sons. So Ahaziah the son of Jehoram king of Judah began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned for one year in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to act wickedly. So he did evil in the sight of the Lord like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father, to his own destruction. He also walked by their counsel, and went with Jehoram the son of Ahab king of Israel to wage war against Haziel king of Aram at Ramoth Gilead. But the Arameans wounded Joram. So he returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which they had inflicted on him at Ramah, when he fought against Haziel king of Aram. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram the son of Ahab in Jezreel, because he was sick. Now the destruction of Ahaziah was from God, in that he went to Joram. For when he arrived, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu the son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to eliminate the house of Ahab. And it came about, when Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab, that he found the princes of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's brothers attending to Ahaziah, and killed them. He also searched for Ahaziah, and they caught him while he was hiding in Samaria, they brought him to Jehu, put him to death, and buried him. For they said, He is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So there was no one of the house of Ahaziah to retain the power of the kingdom. Now when Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she rose and eliminated all the royal children of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth the king's daughter took Josh the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons who were being put to death, and placed him and his nurse in the bedroom. So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah so that she would not put him to death. He kept himself hidden with them in the house of God for six years while Athaliah reigned over the land. Now in the seventh year, Jehoiada gathered his courage, and took captains of hundreds, Azariah the son of Jerahan, Ishmael the son of Johanan, 
Azariah the son of Obed, Messiah the son of Adaiah, and Elishaphat the son of Zikri, and they entered into a covenant with him. And they went throughout Judah and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Judah, and the heads of the Fathers' households of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. Then all the assembly made a covenant with the king in the house of God. And Jehoiada said to them, Behold, the king's son shall reign, as the Lord has spoken concerning the sons of David. This is the thing which you shall do, a third of you, of the priests and Levites who come in on the Sabbath, shall be gatekeepers. And a third shall be at the king's house, and a third at the gate of the foundation, and all the people shall be in the courtyards of the house of the Lord. But no one is to enter the house of the Lord except the priests and the ministering Levites, they may enter, for they are holy. And all the people are to keep the command of the Lord. The Levites will surround the king, each man with his weapons in his hand, and whoever enters the house is to be put to death. Therefore be with the king when he comes in and when he goes out. The Levites and all Judah did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And each one of them took his men who were to come in on the Sabbath, with those who were to go out on the Sabbath, for Jehoiada the priest did not dismiss any of the divisions. Then Jehoiada the priest gave the captains of hundreds the spears and the shields and quivers which had been King David's, which were in the house of God. He stationed all the people, each man with his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the house to the left side of the house, by the altar and by the house, around the king. Then they brought out the king's son and put the crown on him, and gave him the testimony and made him king. And Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and said, Long live the king. When Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she went into the house of the Lord to the people. She looked, and behold, the king was standing by his pillar at the entrance, and the captains and the trumpeters were beside the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew trumpets, the singers with their musical instruments leading the praise. Then Athaliah tore her clothes and said, Conspiracy! Conspiracy! And Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds who were appointed over the army, and said to them, Bring her out between the ranks, and whoever follows her is to be put to death with the sword. For the priest said, You shall not put her to death in the house of the Lord. So they seized her, and when she arrived at the entrance of the horse gate of the king's house, they put her to death there. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between himself and all the people and the king, that they would be the Lord's people. And all the people went to the house of Baal and tore it down, and they broke in pieces his altars and his images, and killed Mutton the priest of Baal before the altars. Moreover, Jehoiada placed the offices of the house of the Lord under the authority of the Levitical priests, whom David had assigned over the house of the Lord, to offer the burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and singing according to the order of David. He stationed the gatekeepers of the house of the Lord, so that no one would enter who was in any way unclean. He took the captains of hundreds, the nobles, the rulers of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought the king down from the house of the Lord, and went through the upper gate to the king's house. And they seated the king upon the royal throne. So all of the people of the land rejoiced and the city was at rest. For they had put Athaliah to death with the sword. Josh was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned for forty years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Zibiah from Beersheba. 2 Josh did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada took two wives for him, and he fathered sons and daughters. Now it came about after this that Josh decided to restore the house of the Lord. He gathered the priests and Levites and said to them, Go out to the cities of Judah and collect money from all Israel to repair the house of your God annually, 
and you shall do the work quickly. But the Levites did not act quickly. So the king summoned Jehoiada, the chief priest, and said to him, Why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Judah and from Jerusalem the contribution of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the congregation of Israel, for the tent of the testimony? For the sons of the wicked Athaliah had broken into the house of God, and even used the holy things of the house of the Lord for the Baals. So the king commanded, and they made a chest and set it outside by the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation in Judah and Jerusalem to bring to the Lord the contribution commanded by Moses the servant of God on Israel in the wilderness. All the officers and all the people rejoiced, and they brought in their contribution and dropped it into the chest until they had finished. It happened that whenever the chest was brought to the king's officer by the Levites, and they saw that the money was substantial, the king's scribe and the chief priest's officer would come and empty the chest, and pick it up and return it to its place. They did this daily and collected a large amount of money. The king and Jehoiada gave it to those who did the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and they hired masons and carpenters to restore the house of the Lord, and also workers in iron and bronze to repair the house of the Lord. So the workmen labored, and the repair work progressed in their hands, and they restored the house of God according to its specifications and strengthened it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada, and it was made into utensils for the house of the Lord, utensils for the service and the burnt offerings, and pans and utensils of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually, all the days of Jehoiada. Now Jehoiada reached a good old age and he died, he was 130 years old at his death. And they buried him in the city of David with the kings, because he had done well in Israel and for God and his house. But after the death of Jehoiada the officials of Judah came and bowed down to the king, and the king listened to them. And they abandoned the house of the Lord, the God of their fathers, and served the Asherim and the idols, so wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this guilt of theirs. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them back to the Lord, and they testified against them, but they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God covered Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest-like clothing, and he stood above the people and said to them, This is what God has said, Why do you break the commandments of the Lord and do not prosper? Because you have abandoned the Lord, he has also abandoned you. So they conspired against him, and at the command of the king they stoned him to death in the courtyard of the house of the Lord. So Josh the king did not remember the kindness which Zechariah's father Jehoiada had shown him, but he murdered his son. And as Zechariah died he said, May the Lord see and avenge. Now it happened at the turn of the year that the army of the Arameans came up against Josh, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem, destroyed all the officials of the people from among the people, and sent all their spoils to the king of Damascus. Indeed, the army of the Arameans came with a small number of men, yet the Lord handed a very great army over to them, because Judah and Josh had abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers. So they executed judgment on Josh. When they left him, for they left him very sick, his own servants conspired against him because of the blood of the son of Jehoiada the priest, and they murdered him on his bed. So he died, and they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the tombs of the kings. Now these are the men who conspired against him, Zabad the son of Shimeth the Ammonitus, and Jehozabad the son of Shimrith the Moabitus. As to his sons and the many pronouncements against him and the rebuilding of the house of God, behold, they are written in the treatise of the book of the kings. Then his son Amaziah became king in his place. Amaziah was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned for twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. 
and his mother's name was Jehodan of Jerusalem. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, only not wholeheartedly. Now it came about, as soon as the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, that he killed his servants who had killed his father the king. However, he did not put their children to death, but did as it is written in the law in the book of Moses, which the Lord commanded, saying, Fathers shall not be put to death for sons, nor sons be put to death for fathers, but each shall be put to death for his own sin. Moreover, Amaziah assembled Judah and appointed them according to their fathers' households under commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds throughout Judah and Benjamin, and he took a census of those from twenty years old and upward and found them to be three hundred thousand choice men, able to go to war and handle spear and shield. He also hired a hundred thousand valiant warriors from Israel for a hundred talents of silver. But a man of God came to him saying, O king, do not let the army of Israel come with you, for the Lord is not with Israel nor with any of the sons of Ephraim. But if you do go, do it, be strong for the battle, yet God will bring you down before the enemy, for God has the power to help and to bring down. Amaziah said to the man of God, But what are we to do about the hundred talents which I have given to the troops of Israel? And the man of God answered, the Lord has much more to give you than this. Then Amaziah dismissed the troops which came to him from Ephraim, to go home, so their anger burned against Judah, and they returned home in fierce anger. Now Amaziah gathered his courage and led his people out, and went to the valley of Salt, and struck and killed ten thousand of the sons of Seir. The sons of Judah also captured ten thousand alive and brought them to the top of the cliff, and threw them down from the top of the cliff so that they were all dashed to pieces. But the troops whom Amaziah sent back, those not going with him to battle, raided the cities of Judah from Samaria to Beth Horon, and struck and killed three thousand of them, and plundered a large amount of spoils. Now after Amaziah came from slaughtering the Edomites, he brought the gods of the sons of Seir and set them up as his gods. Then he bowed down before them and burned incense to them. So the anger of the Lord burned against Amaziah, and he sent him a prophet who said to him, Why have you sought the gods of the people who have not saved their own people from your hand? As he was talking with him, the king said to him, Have we appointed you to be a royal counselor? Stop! Why should you be put to death? Then the prophet stopped and said, I know that God has planned to destroy you, because you have done this and have not listened to my counsel. Then Amaziah king of Judah took counsel and sent word to Josh the son of Jehoahaz the son of Jehu, the king of Israel, saying, Come, let's face each other. But Josh the king of Israel sent a reply to Amaziah king of Judah, saying, the thorn bush that was in Lebanon sent word to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son in marriage. But a wild beast that was in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thorn bush. You said, Behold, you have defeated Edom. And your heart has lifted you up in boasting. Now stay home, why should you provoke trouble so that you, would fall, you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not listen, for it was from God, so that he might hand them over to Josh, because they had sought the gods of Edom. So Josh king of Israel went up, and he and Amaziah king of Judah faced each other at Beth Shemesh, which belonged to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel, and they fled, every man to his tent. Then Josh king of Israel captured Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Josh the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem and tore down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, four hundred cubits. He took all the gold and silver and all the utensils which were found in the house of God with Obadidim, and the treasures of the king's house, the hostages too, and returned to Samaria. And Amaziah, 
the son of Josh king of Judah, lived fifteen years after the death of Josh, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, from the first to the last, behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? From the time that Amaziah turned away from following the Lord they conspired against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, but they sent men after him to Lachish, and they killed him there. Then they brought him on horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Now all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in place of his father Amaziah. He built a loft and restored it to Judah after the king lay down with his fathers. Uzziah was sixteen years old when he became king, and he reigned for fifty-two years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jechilia of Jerusalem. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, in accordance with everything that his father Amaziah had done. He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him successful. Now he went out and fought against the Philistines, and broke down the wall of Gath, the wall of Jabna, and the wall of Ashdod, and he built cities in the area of Ashdod and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines, and against the Arabians who lived in Gerbal, and the Munites. The Ammonites gave tribute to Isaiah, and his fame extended to the border of Egypt, for he became very strong. Moreover, Isaiah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, the valley gate, and at the corner buttress, and he fortified them. He also built towers in the wilderness and carved out many cisterns, for he had much livestock, both in the lowland and in the plain. He also had plowmen and vine dressers in the hill country and the fertile fields, for he loved the soil. Moreover, Isaiah had an army ready for battle, which entered combat by divisions according to the number of their muster, recorded by Geel the scribe and Messiah the official, under the direction of Hananiah, one of the king's officers. The total number of the heads of the households, of valiant warriors, was 2,600. Under their direction was an army of 307,500, who could wage war with great power, to help the king against the enemy. Moreover, Isaiah prepared for all the army shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and sling stones. In Jerusalem he made machines of war invented by skillful workmen to be on the towers and the corners, for the purpose of shooting arrows and great stones. So his fame spread far, for he was marvelously helped until he was strong. But when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly, and he was untrue to the Lord his God, for he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Then Azariah the priest entered after him, and with him eighty priests of the Lord, valiant men. They opposed Isaiah the king and said to him, It is not for you, Isaiah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been untrue and will have no honor from the Lord God. But Isaiah, with a censer in his hand for burning incense, was enraged, and while he was enraged with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead in the presence of the priests in the house of the Lord, beside the altar of incense. Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked at him, and behold, he was leprous on his forehead, and they quickly removed him from there, and he himself also hurried to get out because the Lord had stricken him. King Isaiah had leprosy to the day of his death, and he lived in a separate house, afflicted as he was with leprosy, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And his son Jotham was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Isaiah, the first to the last, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amaz, has written. So Isaiah lay down with his fathers, 
and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the grave which belonged to the kings, for they said, He had leprosy. And his son Jotham became king in his place. Jotham was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned for sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerusha the daughter of Zadok. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Isaiah had done, however he did not enter the temple of the Lord. But the people continued acting corruptly. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord, and he built the wall of Awful extensively. Moreover, he built cities in the hill country of Judah, and he built fortresses and towers on the wooded hills. He fought with the king of the Ammonites and prevailed over them so that during that year the Ammonites gave him a hundred talents of silver, ten thousand cores of wheat, and ten thousand of barley. The Ammonites also paid him this amount in the second year and in the third. So Jotham became powerful because he directed his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham, all his wars and his ways, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for sixteen years. And Jotham lay down with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and his son Ahaz became king in his place. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for sixteen years. He did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord as his father David had done. But he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, he also made cast metal images for the Baals. Furthermore, he burned incense in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, and burned his sons in fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had driven out from the sons of Israel. He sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. Therefore the Lord his God handed him over to the king of Aram, and they defeated him and carried from him a great number of captives, and brought them to Damascus. And he was also handed over to the king of Israel, who struck him with heavy casualties. For Pekah the son of Remaliah killed 120,000 in Judah in one day, all valiant men, because they had abandoned the Lord God of their fathers. And Zikri, a mighty man of Ephraim, killed Messiah the king's son, Azrakam the ruler of the house, and Elkanah the second to the king. The sons of Israel led away captive 200,000 of their relatives, women, sons, and daughters, and they also took a great deal of spoils from them, and brought the spoils to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded, and he went out to meet the army which came to Samaria and said to them, Behold, because the Lord, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah, he has handed them over to you, and you have killed them in a rage which has even reached heaven. Now you are proposing to subjugate the people of Judah and Jerusalem as male and female slaves for yourselves. Are you not, however guilty yourselves of offenses against the Lord your God? Now then, listen to me and return the captives whom you captured from your brothers, for the burning anger of the Lord is against you. Then some of the leading men of the sons of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Johanan, Berechiah the son of Meshillamoth, Jehizkiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadlai, rose up against those who were coming from the battle. And said to them, You must not bring the captives in here, for you are proposing to bring guilt upon us before the Lord, adding to our sins and our guilt, for our guilt is great, and his burning anger is against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoils before the officers and all the assembly. Then the men who were designated by name got up, took the captives, and they clothed all their naked people from the spoils, they gave them clothes and sandals, fed them and gave them drink, anointed them with oil, led all their feeble ones on donkeys, and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, to their brothers, then they returned to Samaria. 
At that time King Ahaz sent word to the kings of Assyria for help. For the Edomites had come again and attacked Judah, and led away captives. The Philistines had also invaded the cities of the lowland and of the Negev of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh, Ijalan, Gedaroth, and Soko with its villages, Timnah with its villages, and Gimzo with its villages, and they had settled there. For the Lord had humbled Judah because of Ahaz king of Israel, for he had brought about a lack of restraint in Judah and was very unfaithful to the Lord. So Tilgath Pilneser king of Assyria came against him and afflicted him instead of strengthening him. Although Ahaz took a portion out of the house of the Lord and out of the palace of the king and of the princes, and gave it to the king of Assyria, it did not help him. Now during the time of his distress, this same king Ahaz became even more unfaithful to the Lord. For he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus who had defeated him, and said, Because the gods of the kings of Aram helped them, I will sacrifice to them so that they may help me. But they became the downfall of him and all Israel. Moreover, when Ahaz gathered together the utensils of the house of God, he cut the utensils of the house of God in pieces, and he closed the doors of the house of the Lord, and made altars for himself in every corner of Jerusalem. In every city of Judah he made high places to burn incense to other gods, and provoked the Lord, the God of his fathers, to anger. Now the rest of his acts and all his ways, from the first to the last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Ahaz lay down with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, in Jerusalem, for they did not bring him to the tombs of the kings of Israel, and his son Hezekiah reigned in his place. Hezekiah became king when he was twenty-five years old, and he reigned for twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, in accordance with everything that his father David had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. He brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them into the public square on the east. Then he said to them, Listen to me, you Levites. Consecrate yourselves now, and consecrate the house of the Lord, the God of your fathers, and carry the uncleanness out of the holy place. For our fathers have been unfaithful and have done evil in the sight of the Lord our God, and they have abandoned him and turned their faces away from the dwelling place of the Lord, and have turned their backs. They have also shut the doors of the porch and extinguished the lamps, and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel. Therefore the wrath of the Lord was against Judah and Jerusalem, and he has made them an object of terror, of horror, and of hissing, as you see with your own eyes. For behold, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons, our daughters, and our wives are in captivity because of this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, so that his burning anger may turn away from us. My sons, do not be negligent now, for the Lord has chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and to be his ministers and burn incense. Then the Levites arose, Mahath the son of Amasai and Joel the son of Azariah, from the sons of the Kohathites, and from the sons of Merari, Kish the son of Abdi and Azariah the son of Jehalalel, and from the Jershonites, Joah the son of Zimah and Eden the son of Joah. And from the sons of Elizaphan, Shimri and Jeel, and from the sons of Azaph, Zechariah and Metania. And from the sons of Heman, Jehiel and Shimi, and from the sons of Jeduthun, Shemaiah and Uzziel. They assembled their brothers, consecrated themselves, and went in to cleanse the house of the Lord, according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord. So the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it, 
And they brought every unclean thing which they found in the temple of the Lord out to the courtyard of the house of the Lord. Then the Levites received it to carry out to the Kidron Valley. Now they began the consecration on the first day of the first month, and on the eighth day of the month they entered the porch of the Lord. Then they consecrated the house of the Lord in eight days, and finished on the sixteenth day of the first month. Then they went in to King Hezekiah and said, We have cleansed the whole house of the Lord, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the table of the showbread with all of its utensils. Moreover, all the utensils which King Ahaz had discarded during his reign in his unfaithfulness, we have prepared and consecrated, and behold, they are before the altar of the Lord. Then King Hezekiah got up early and assembled the princes of the city, and went up to the house of the Lord. They brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven lambs, and seven male goats as a sin offering for the kingdom, the sanctuary, and Judah. And he ordered the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they slaughtered the bulls, and the priests took the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. They also slaughtered the rams and sprinkled the blood on the altar, they slaughtered the lambs as well, and sprinkled the blood on the altar. Then they brought the male goats of the sin offering before the king and the assembly, and they laid their hands on them. The priests slaughtered them and purified the altar with their blood to atone for all Israel, because the king ordered the burnt offering and the sin offering for all Israel. He then stationed the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, harps, and lyres, according to the command of David and of Gad, the king's seer, and of Nathan the prophet, for the command was from the Lord through his prophets. The Levites stood with the musical instruments of David, and the priests with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah gave the order to offer the burnt offering on the altar. When the burnt offering began, the song to the Lord also began with the trumpets, accompanied by the instruments of David, king of Israel. While the whole assembly worshipped, the singers also sang and the trumpets sounded, all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. Now at the completion of the burnt offerings, the king and all who were present with him bowed down and worshipped. Moreover, King Hezekiah and the officials ordered the Levites to sing praises to the Lord with the words of David and Asaph the seer. So they sang praises with joy, and bowed down and worshipped. Then Hezekiah said, Now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, come forward and bring sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings to the house of the Lord. So the assembly brought sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings, and everyone who was willing brought burnt offerings. The number of the burnt offerings which the assembly brought was seventy bulls, a hundred rams, and two hundred lambs, all of these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. The consecrated offerings were six hundred bulls and three thousand sheep. But the priests were too few, so that they were unable to skin all the burnt offerings, therefore their brothers the Levites helped them until the work was finished and the other priests had consecrated themselves. For the Levites were more conscientious to consecrate themselves than the priests. There were also many burnt offerings with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for the burnt offerings. So the service of the house of the Lord was established again. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced over what God had prepared for the people, because the thing came about suddenly. Now Hezekiah sent word to all Israel and Judah and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover to the Lord God of Israel. For the king and his princes and all the assembly in Jerusalem had decided to celebrate the Passover in the second month. Since they could not celebrate it at that time, because the priests had not consecrated themselves in sufficient numbers, nor had the people been gathered to Jerusalem. So the decision was right in the sight of the king and all the assembly. 
So they established a decree to circulate a proclamation throughout Israel from Beersheba to Dan, that they are to come to celebrate the Passover to the Lord God of Israel in Jerusalem. For they had not celebrated it in great numbers as was written. The couriers went throughout Israel and Judah with the letters from the hand of the king and his princes, even according to the command of the king, saying, Sons of Israel, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that he may return to those of you who escaped and are left from the hand of the kings of Assyria. Do not be like your fathers and your brothers, who were untrue to the Lord God of their fathers, so that he made them an object of horror, just as you see. Now do not stiffen your neck like your fathers, but yield to the Lord and enter his sanctuary which he has consecrated forever, and serve the Lord your God, that his burning anger may turn away from you. 9 For if you return to the Lord, your brothers and your sons will find compassion in the presence of those who led them captive, and will return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate, and will not turn his face away from you if you return to him. So the couriers passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, and as far as Zebulun, but they laughed at them with scorn and mocked them. Nevertheless, some men of Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart to do what the king and the princes commanded by the word of the Lord. Now many people were gathered at Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the second month, a very large assembly. They got up and removed the altars which were in Jerusalem, they also removed all the incense altars and threw them into the brook Kidron. Then they slaughtered the Passover lambs on the fourteenth of the second month. And the priests and Levites were ashamed of themselves, and consecrated themselves and brought burnt offerings to the house of the Lord. They stood at their stations following their custom, according to the law of Moses the man of God, the priests sprinkled the blood which they received from the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the assembly who had not consecrated themselves, therefore, the Levites were in charge of the slaughter of the Passover lambs for everyone who was unclean, in order to consecrate them to the Lord. For a multitude of the people, many from Ephraim and Manasseh, and Issachar and Zebulun, had not purified themselves, yet they ate the Passover contrary to what was written. For Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the good Lord pardon. Everyone who prepares his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though not according to the purification rules of the sanctuary. So the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. The sons of Israel present in Jerusalem celebrated the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days with great joy, and the Levites and the priests were praising the Lord day after day with loud instruments to the Lord. Then Hezekiah spoke encouragingly to all the Levites who showed good insight in the things of the Lord. So they ate for the appointed seven days, sacrificing peace offerings and giving thanks to the Lord God of their fathers. Then the whole assembly decided to celebrate the feast another seven days, so they celebrated the seven days with joy. For Hezekiah king of Judah had contributed to the assembly a thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep, and the princes had contributed to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep, and a large number of priests consecrated themselves. All the assembly of Judah rejoiced, with the priests and the Levites and all the assembly that came from Israel, both the strangers who came from the land of Israel and those living in Judah. So there was great joy in Jerusalem, because there was nothing like this in Jerusalem since the days of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel. Then the Levitical priests stood and blessed the people, and their voice was heard and their prayer came to his holy dwelling place, to heaven. Now when all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah, broke the memorial stones in pieces, cut down the ashram and pulled down the high places and the altars throughout Judah and Benjamin, 
as well as in Ephraim and Manasseh, until they had destroyed them all. Then all the sons of Israel returned to their cities, each to his possession. And Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and the Levites by their divisions, each according to his service, both the priests and the Levites, for burnt offerings and for peace offerings, to serve and to give thanks and to praise in the gates of the camp of the Lord. He also appointed the king's portion of his property for the burnt offerings, namely, for the morning and evening burnt offerings, and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and for the new moons and for the appointed festivals, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Also he told the people who lived in Jerusalem to give the portion due to the priests and the Levites, so that they might devote themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the order spread, the sons of Israel abundantly provided the first fruits of grain, new wine, oil, honey, and of all the produce of the field, and they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. The sons of Israel and Judah who lived in the cities of Judah also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep, and the tithe of sacred gifts which were consecrated to the Lord their God, and placed them in heaps. In the third month they began to make the heaps, and they finished them by the seventh month. When Hezekiah and the rulers came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, said to him, Since the contribution started coming into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat with plenty left over, for the Lord has blessed his people, and this great quantity is left over. Then Hezekiah commanded them to prepare rooms in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them. They faithfully brought in the contributions, the tithes, and the consecrated things, and Konania the Levite was the officer in charge of them, and his brother Shimi was second. Jehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Asahel, Jeremoth, Josabad, Eliel, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Benaiah were overseers under the authority of Konania and his brother Shimi by the appointment of King Hezekiah, and Azariah was the chief officer of the house of God. Kore the son of Imna the Levite, the keeper of the eastern gate, was in charge of the voluntary offerings for God, to distribute the contributions for the Lord and the most holy things. Under his authority were Eden, Miniamin, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah, in the cities of the priests, to distribute their portions faithfully to their brothers by divisions, whether great or small. Without regard to their genealogical enrollment, to the males from thirty years old and upward, everyone who entered the house of the Lord for his daily obligations, for their work in their duties according to their divisions. As well as the priests who were enrolled genealogically according to their fathers households, and the Levites from twenty years old and upward, by their duties and their divisions. The genealogical enrollment included all their little children, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, for the whole assembly, for they consecrated themselves faithfully in holiness. Also for the sons of Aaron, the priests, who were in the pasture lands of their cities, or in each and every city, there were men who were designated by name to distribute portions to every male among the priests and to everyone genealogically enrolled among the Levites. Hezekiah did this throughout Judah, and he did what was good, right, and true before the Lord his God. Every work which he began in the service of the house of God in the law and in the commandment, seeking his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. After these acts of faithfulness Sennacherib king of Assyria came and invaded Judah and besieged the fortified cities, and intended to break into them for himself. Now when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that he intended to wage war against Jerusalem, he decided with his officers and his warriors to cut off the supply of water from the springs which were outside the city, and they helped him. So many people assembled and stopped up all the springs and the stream which flowed through the region, saying, 
why should the kings of Assyria come and find abundant water? And he resolutely set to work and rebuilt all of the wall that had been broken down and erected towers on it, and built another outside wall and strengthened the millow in the city of David, and made weapons and shields in great numbers. He appointed military officers over the people and gathered them to him in the public square at the city gate, and spoke encouragingly to them, saying, Be strong and courageous, do not fear or be dismayed because of the king of Assyria nor because of all the horde that is with him, for the one with us is greater than the one with him. With him is only an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people relied on the words of Hezekiah king of Judah. After this Sennacherib king of Assyria sent his servants to Jerusalem while he was besieging Lachish with all his forces with him, against Hezekiah king of Judah and against all of Judah who were in Jerusalem, saying, This is what Sennacherib king of Assyria says, On what are you trusting that you are staying in Jerusalem under siege? Is Hezekiah not misleading you to give yourselves over to die by hunger and by thirst, saying, the Lord our God will save us from the hand of the king of Assyria. Is it not the same Hezekiah who removed his high places and his altars, and said to Judah and Jerusalem, You shall worship before one altar, and on it you shall burn incense? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of the lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands at all able to save their land from my hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations which my fathers utterly destroyed who could save his people from my hand, that your God would be able to save you from my hand? Now then, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or mislead you like this, and do not believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom was able to save his people from my hand or from the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God save you from my hand? His servant spoke further against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He also wrote letters to insult the Lord God of Israel, and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of the lands have not saved their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not save his people from my hand. They called this out with a loud voice in the language of Judah to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall, to frighten and terrify them so that they might take the city. They spoke of the God of Jerusalem as they did against the gods of the peoples of the earth, the work of human hands. But King Hezekiah and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amaz, prayed about this and called out to heaven for help. And the Lord sent an angel who destroyed every warrior, commander, and officer in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned in shame to his own land. And when he had entered the temple of his God, some of his own sons killed him there with the sword. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib the king of Assyria and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. And many were bringing gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem and valuable presents to Hezekiah king of Judah, so thereafter he rose in the sight of all nations. In those days Hezekiah became mortally ill, and he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah did nothing in return for the benefit he received, because his heart was proud, therefore wrath came upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. However, Hezekiah humbled the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come on them in the days of Hezekiah. Now Hezekiah had immense riches and honor, and he made for himself treasuries for silver, gold, precious stones, spices, shields, and all kinds of valuable articles. Also storehouses for the produce of grain, wine, and oil, stalls for all kinds of cattle, and sheepfolds for the flocks. He made cities for himself and acquired flocks and herds in abundance, because God had given him very great wealth. 
It was Hezekiah who stopped the upper outlet of the waters of Gion and directed them to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah was successful in everything that he did. Even in the matter of the messengers of the rulers of Babylon, who were sent to him to inquire about the wonder that had happened in the land, God left him alone only to test him, so that he might know everything that was in his heart. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his deeds of devotion, behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Hezekiah lay down with his fathers, and they buried him in the upper section of the tombs of the sons of David, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem honored him at his death. And his son Manasseh became king in his place. Manasseh was twelve years old when he became king, and he reigned for fifty-five years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord dispossessed before the sons of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places which his father Hezekiah had torn down, he also set up altars for the Baals and made Ashram, and he worshipped all the heavenly lights and served them. He built altars in the house of the Lord of which the Lord had said, My name shall be in Jerusalem forever. He built altars for all the heavenly lights in the two courtyards of the house of the Lord. He also made his sons pass through the fire in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, and he practiced witchcraft, used divination, practiced sorcery, and dealt with mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Then he put the carved image of the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and his son Solomon, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen from all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. And I will not remove the foot of Israel again from the land which I have appointed for your fathers, if only they will take care to do everything that I have commanded them according to all the law, the statutes, and the ordinances given through Moses. So Manasseh encouraged Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the sons of Israel. So the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. 11 Therefore the Lord brought the commanders of the army of the king of Assyria against them, and they captured Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze chains, and led him to Babylon. When he was in distress, he appeased the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. When he prayed to him, he was moved by him and heard his pleading, and brought him back to Jerusalem to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord alone is God. Now after this he built the outer wall of the city of David on the west side of Gion, in the valley, up to the entrance of the fish gate, and he encircled the offal with it and made it very high. Then he put army commanders in all the fortified cities in Judah. He also removed the foreign gods and the idol from the house of the Lord, as well as all the altars which he had built on the mountain of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem, and he threw them outside the city. He set up the altar of the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings and thanksgiving offerings on it, and he ordered Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. However, the people still sacrificed on the high places, although only to the Lord their God. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer to his God, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, behold, they are among the records of the kings of Israel. His prayer also and how God was moved by him, and all his sin, his unfaithfulness, and the sites on which he built high places and erected the ashram and the carved images, before he humbled himself, behold, they are written in the records of Hosai. So Manasseh lay down with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house. And his son Ammon became king in his place. Ammon was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned for two years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, 
just as his father Manasseh had done, and Ammon sacrificed to all the carved images which his father Manasseh had made, and he served them. Furthermore, he did not humble himself before the Lord as his father Manasseh had done, but Ammon multiplied his guilt. Finally, his servants conspired against him and put him to death in his own house. But the people of the land killed all the conspirators against King Ammon, and the people of the land made his son Josiah king in his place. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned for thirty-one years in Jerusalem. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of his father David and did not turn aside to the right or the left. For in the eighth year of his reign while he was still a youth, he began to seek the God of his father David, and in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the ashram, the carved images, and the cast metal images. They tore down the altars of the Baals in his presence, and he chopped down the incense altars that were high above them, also he broke in pieces the ashram, the carved images, and the cast metal images, and ground them to powder, and scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. Then he burned the bones of the priests on their altars and purged Judah and Jerusalem. In the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, Simeon, and as far as Naphtali, in their surrounding spaces. He also tore down the altars and crushed the ashram and the carved images into powder, and chopped down all the incense altars throughout the land of Israel. Then he returned to Jerusalem. Now in the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan the son of Azaliah, Messiah an official of the city, and Joah the son of Johaz the secretary, to repair the house of the Lord his God. They came to Hilkiah the high priest and gave him the money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites, the doorkeepers, had collected from Manasseh and Ephraim, and from all the remnant of Israel, from all Judah and Benjamin and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Then they handed it over to the workmen who had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and the workmen who were working in the house of the Lord used it to restore and repair the house. They in turn gave it to the carpenters and the builders to buy quarried stone and timber for couplings, and to make beams for the houses which the kings of Judah had let go to ruin. The men did the work faithfully with foremen over them to supervise, Jehoth and Obadiah, the Levites of the sons of Merari, Zechariah and Meshullam of the sons of the Kohathites, and the Levites, all who were skillful with musical instruments. They were also in charge of the burden bearers, and supervised all the workmen from job to job, and some of the Levites were scribes, and officials, and gatekeepers. When they were bringing out the money which had been brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. Hilkiah responded and said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan. Then Shaphan brought the book to the king and reported further word to the king, saying, Everything that was entrusted to your servants, they are doing. They have also emptied out the money which was found in the house of the Lord, and have handed it over to the supervisors and the workmen. Moreover, Shaphan the scribe informed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest gave me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded Hilkiah, Ahikam the son of Shaphan, Abdon the son of Micah, Shaphan the scribe, and Isaiah the king's servant, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me and for those who are left in Israel and Judah, concerning the words of the book which has been found, for the wrath of the Lord which has poured out on us is great, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord, to act in accordance with everything that is written in this book. So Hilkiah and those whom the king had told went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom the son of Tokath, the son of Hazra, 
the keeper of the wardrobe, she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke to her regarding this. Then she said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says, Behold, I am bringing evil on this place and on its inhabitants, all the curses written in the book which they have read in the presence of the king of Judah. Since they have abandoned me and have burned incense to other gods, so that they may provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands, my wrath will be poured out on this place and it will not be quenched. But to the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is what you shall say to him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, in regard to the words which you have heard. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and its inhabitants, and because you humbled yourself before me, tore your clothes, and wept before me, I have indeed heard you, declares the Lord. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you will be gathered to your grave in peace, so your eyes will not see all the evil which I am bringing on this place and its inhabitants. And they brought back word to the king. Then the king sent word and gathered all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests, the Levites, and all the people, from the greatest to the least, and he read in their presence all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord. Then the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord, and to keep his commandments, his testimonies, and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul, to perform the words of the covenant that are written in this book. Furthermore, he made all who were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin stand with him. So the inhabitants of Jerusalem acted in accordance with the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. Josiah removed all the abominations from all the lands belonging to the sons of Israel, and made all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. Throughout his lifetime they did not turn from following the Lord God of their fathers. Then Josiah celebrated the Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem, and they slaughtered the Passover animals on the fourteenth day of the first month. He appointed the priests to their offices and encouraged them in the service of the house of the Lord. He also said to the Levites who taught all Israel and who were holy to the Lord, Put the holy ark in the house which Solomon the son of David king of Israel built, it will not be a burden on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves by your fathers' households in your divisions, according to the writing of David king of Israel and according to the writing of his son Solomon. Furthermore, stand in the holy place according to the sections of the fathers' households of your countrymen, the lay people, and according to the Levites, by division of a father's household. Now slaughter the Passover animals, keep one another consecrated, and prepare for your countrymen to act in accordance with the word of the Lord by Moses. Josiah contributed to the lay people, to all who were present, flocks of lambs and young goats, all for the Passover offerings, numbering thirty thousand, plus three thousand bulls, these were from the king's property. His officers also contributed a voluntary offering to the people, the priests, and the Levites. Hilkiah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, the officials of the house of God, gave the priests 2,600 from the flocks and 300 bulls, for the Passover offerings. Conania also, and his brothers Shemaiah and Nethanel, and Hashabiah and Jeel and Josabad, the officers of the Levites, contributed 5,000 from the flocks and 500 bulls to the Levites for the Passover offerings. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood at their positions and the Levites by their divisions according to the king's command. They slaughtered the Passover animals, and while the priests sprinkled the blood received from their hand, the Levites skinned the animals. 
Then they removed the burnt offerings so that they might give them to the sections of the Fathers households of the lay people to present to the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses. They did this with the bulls as well. So they roasted the Passover animals on the fire according to the ordinance, and they boiled the holy things in pots, in kettles, and in pans and carried them quickly to all the lay people. Afterward they prepared for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were offering the burnt offerings and the fat until night, so the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. The singers, the sons of Azaph, were also at their positions according to the command of David, Azaph, Heman, and Juduthan the king's seer, and the gatekeepers at each gate did not have to leave their service, because their kinsmen the Levites prepared for them. So all the service of the Lord was prepared on that day to celebrate the Passover, and to offer burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord according to the command of King Josiah. And the sons of Israel who were present celebrated the Passover at that time, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. There had not been a Passover celebrated like it in Israel since the days of Samuel the prophet, nor had any of the kings of Israel celebrated such a Passover as Josiah did with the priests, the Levites, all Judah and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of Josiah's reign this Passover was celebrated. After all this, when Josiah had set the temple in order, Necho king of Egypt came up to wage war at Carchemish on the Euphrates, and Josiah went out to engage him. But Necho sent messengers to him, saying, What business do you have with me, king of Judah? I am not coming against you today, but against the house with which I am at war, and God has told me to hurry. For your own sake, stop interfering with God who is with me, so that he does not destroy you. However, Josiah would not turn away from him, but disguised himself in order to fight against him, nor did he listen to the words of Necho from the mouth of God, but he came to wage war on the plain of Megiddo. The archers shot King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Take me away, for I am badly wounded. So his servants took him out of the chariot and carried him on the second chariot which he had, and brought him to Jerusalem where he died and was buried in the tombs of his fathers. All Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Then Jeremiah chanted a song of mourning for Josiah. And all the male and female singers speak about Josiah in their songs of mourning to this day. And they made them an ordinance in Israel, behold, they are also written in the Lamentations. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his deeds of devotion as written in the law of the Lord. And his acts, the first to the last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then the people of the land took Johaz the son of Josiah and made him king in place of his father in Jerusalem. Johaz was twenty-three years old when he became king, and he reigned for three months in Jerusalem. Then the king of Egypt deposed him in Jerusalem, and imposed a fine on the land of a hundred talents of silver and one talent of gold. The king of Egypt made Johaz brother Eliakim king over Judah and Jerusalem, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. But Necho took his brother Johaz and brought him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned for eleven years in Jerusalem, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. 6. Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up against him and bound him with bronze chains to take him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also brought some of the articles of the house of the Lord to Babylon, and he put them in his temple in Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and the abominations which he committed, and what was found against him, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And his son Jehoiakim became king in his place. Jehoiakim was eighteen years old when he became king, 
and he reigned for three months and ten days in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. At the turn of the year King Nebuchadnezzar sent men and had him brought to Babylon with the valuable articles of the house of the Lord, and he made his relative Zedekiah king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was twenty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned for eleven years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord his God, he did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet who spoke for the Lord. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear allegiance by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord God of Israel. Furthermore, all the officials of the priests and the people were very unfaithful, following all the abominations of the nations, and they defiled the house of the Lord which he had sanctified in Jerusalem. Yet the Lord, the God of their fathers, sent word to them again and again by his messengers, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they continually mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people, until there was no remedy. So he brought up against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin, old man or frail, he handed them all over to him. He brought all the articles of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and his officers, to Babylon. 19 Then they burned the house of God and broke down the wall of Jerusalem, and burned all its fortified buildings with fire and destroyed all its valuable articles. He took into exile those who had escaped from the sword to Babylon, and they were servants to him and to his sons until the rule of the kingdom of Persia. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed its Sabbaths. All the days of its desolation it kept the Sabbath until seventy years were complete. Now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia so that he sent a proclamation throughout his kingdom, and also put it in writing, saying, This is what Cyrus king of Persia says, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him, go up then.